One, ready, go. And this is Pastor Barth from Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Winnetka, California. And we're, this is our first time on live Facebook. So if we make any mistakes, you can blame, uh, blame me. Anyway, welcome to God's house. And uh, we have the band with us today. Uh, we also printed or put in a worship service for you in the email. Uh, maybe you have it and maybe you don't but you're welcome to follow along and participate in the service. So we're going to begin with the opening song, uh, Stand and See What the Lord Will Do. And if you're at home sitting, why don't you stand, okay? Stand and see what the Lord will do In the struggle you face, he will fight for you By the power of his arm, he will bring you through Stand and see what the Lord will do Stand and see what the Lord will do In the struggle you face, he will fight for you By the power of his arm, he will bring you through Stand and see what the Lord will do. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For the Lord your God, the Lord your God, the Lord your God will deliver you. Stand and see what the Lord will do In the struggle you face, He will fight for you By the power of His arm, He will bring you through Stand and see what the Lord will do Stand and see what the Lord will do Stand and see what the Lord will do begin our time together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the opening responses today are Bible verses, a litany on the eyes, E-Y-E-S. The eyes of all wait upon thee, O Lord. You give them their food at the proper time. 
you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. When you, when you spread, spread your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you, says the Lord. Your hands are full of blood. Stop doing wrong and learn to do what is right. Seek justice, defend the cause of the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the peoples, a light to the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, and to release those who sit in darkness. Look, Look on me and, and answer me, O Lord, Lord my God. God. Give, Give light to my eyes. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for he rescues me. Be merciful to me, O Lord, when I am in distress. Often my eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. Deliver me from my troubles, and my eyes will look with triumph. You, you O Lord, have, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Open my eyes that I may see the wonderful things of your word. Turn my eyes from worthless things and preserve my life according to your word. I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. My eyes are fixed on you. O sovereign Lord, in you I take refuge. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is not seen. For what is seen is only temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Let us, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. And together let us pray the prayer for the day. We come before your throne of grace this morning, O Lord. We praise and thank you for the gift of sight. Especially, we thank you for the gift of the sight of faith, which enables us to see and know you clearly. Continue to heal people of spiritual blindness. Open our hearts and minds to see and understand clearly your will and grace through our Lord Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. At this time we would usually uh, continue with the greeting of peace, but today we're going to do the musical greeting of peace to the words of Edelweiss Melody, May the Lord, Mighty Lord. We'll sing it through twice.
and turn to John chapter 9, if you would, okay? John chapter 9, and in our Bibles, it's on page 1,664. All right, are we settled in? So today, uh, the, through these weeks in March, as we continue our journey through the season of Lent, we're dealing with the conversation of Jesus with various people in the Gospel of St. John. Two weeks ago, it was Nicodemus. Last week was the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. And today, we are in John chapter 9, where there are many conversations. And it all centers around the, ma uh, the man born blind. In fact, there are 16 questions in these verses and seven conversations or acts of, or drama, if you will. And I want you to notice as we read it how much confusion and controversy there is over this simple act of a man born blind who is healed. So let me read, okay? As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parent, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said. This happened so that the work of God may be displayed in his life. For as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So having said this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he said, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same guy we used to see sitting and begging. Some claimed he was, but others said, no, he only looks like him. The man himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Salome and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. So where is this man? They asked, I don't know. So the neighbors brought him to the Pharisees, this man who had been born blind. Now the day on which Jesus made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes. I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees says, this man, he's not from God for he does not keep the Sabbath. Others asked, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were all divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe he was been born blind and had received the sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it he now can see? We know he is our son, they answered. We know he was born blind. But, we, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For already the Jews decided that anyone who acknowledged Jesus was the Christ would be thrown out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So now, the second time they summoned the man who was born blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. They asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I've told you this already, and you don't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They hurled insults at him. 
You are this fellow's disciples, they said. We're disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses. But as for this man, we don't even know where he comes from. The man who was healed answered, now that's remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. Let's finish the story, okay? Jesus heard they'd thrown him out, and he found the man, and he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he's the one speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he fell down and worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see. And those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what? Are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. All right. Long conversations. If you go back to chapter 8, the last verse ends with Jesus slipping away from the Jews in the temple courts in Jerusalem, and they are picking up stones to stone him. All right? So Jesus slips away. He's still in the city, and he sees this man who is born blind. The disciples ask, well, who sinned, the man or his parents? Evidently, in those days, blindness was considered a punishment for sin. But Jesus shifts the emphasis from the cause of his blindness to the purpose, and that is so God's work is displayed. The healing itself, amazingly, takes two verses. Very simple. Jesus takes some spit and some mud, rubs it together, puts it on the man's eyes, and he says, go to the pool, wash your eyes, and now he sees. Now, the crazy thing in all this is the neighbors. Now, think about this group of neighbors. They've known this guy their whole life. They know he's born, he's a beggar, he's, he was born blind. They know his history, but they now question him, all right? They question him, and they're not happy with his answers, so now they take him where? To the Pharisees. If you look at verse, uh, what, 13 and following. In verse 14, we learn what the real deal is. In verse 14, we find out that what Jesus did was on the Sabbath day. And now, yet again, it becomes an offense, all right? Because he needed the mud and his spit and placed it on the man's eyes, all right? So the Pharisees, the, the, they brought the man to the Pharisees, and um, then they couldn't, they, they couldn't deal or figure out what to do with it, all right? So now they go, if you go to verse, where is it? Uh, verse 18 go and they bring the man's parents and they ask him and, the, and who is this guy and they admit he's our son he was born blind but if you notice the parents don't want to get into answering how and who and the reason is because they would get thrown out of the synagogue so they were afraid so they say nothing all right now the chapter continues on and then we have the second encounter with the man and the, and the Pharisees, okay? And here, uh, they, he, they say, tell us the truth. We know this man is a sinner. And then the guy starts arguing back, and he says to them, do you want to be his disciples as well? That's kind of a little jab in the ribs of the Pharisees. And, fi and finally, they fire back to him. You were born in sin, they say, and you're not going to lecture us. So what do they do? 
they throw him out of the synagogue. So the final scene, after all this, the final scene ends with Jesus finding the man. He reveals to him who he is. The man worships him, believes in him, and accepts him as the Messiah. And then at the end, we have yet another encounter between Jesus and the Pharisees. So that's the long story. Three things that we learned. First of all, the man born blind. He's quite a guy. I wonder how old he was. But if you look at this, he has wit and he has some strong convictions, all right? He also has a sense of humor and he can be sarcastic. He got back at the Pharisees. But his whole life, his only means of support was begging. And now his entire life has changed completely because of his encounter with Jesus. The man is a case study of conversion, of someone who comes to Jesus. Let me go through the process. At the beginning of this chapter, he calls Jesus the man. And he doesn't know where he is. And he doesn't know who he is. Then he calls Jesus a prophet. And he says of Jesus, well, we know God doesn't listen to, a, to sinners, but to a godly man he does, who does his will, he will listen. So if this man is not from God, or if this man was not from God, he could do nothing. And then it ends... He ends with confessing his faith and worshiping Jesus. The ironic thing here is the beggar becomes the believer in Jesus. And it's a marvelous, marvelous process he goes through. Number two, in these verses, Jesus is spoken of in three ways. He's not from God, it said. He's a prophet, and then he's a sinner. The second point here is Jesus is still the point of confusion and contention in the world today. He still causes division and controversy in among people. And so I want to say to you, you and I as children of the Lord Jesus Christ, as children of the Heavenly Father, we need to know who Jesus is and whom we worship. Let me say this. Faith is not blind. Faith is not ignorant. Let me say it again. Faith is not blind. God does not want his children to be ignorant people. It is incumbent upon every believer to know the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ, to know who he is as God the Son, to know why he came into this world, to know the plan of salvation, that he gave up his life on the cross to pay for the sins of the world, and he rose again to give eternal life and the resurrection of the body to all who believe in him. So I want to say to you as believers in this world, God doesn't want people who know little or nothing about him. And people say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but then they have no conviction no understanding, and very little knowledge of who Jesus is. And I want to say to you, be strong in your conviction. Understand the plan of salvation, and then you can bear witness to the Lord Jesus Christ, even against those who hate him, and will probably end up hating you. All right? Third point. In the last verses, in, especially in verse 39, let me go to that for a moment, we have another metaphor. Jesus liked metaphors, okay? Last week, the metaphor was living water. Two weeks ago was being born anew or born from above. Here's the new metaphor of today. The blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Now that makes no sense at all. The blind will see, and, the, and the, those who see will be blind. What this is, Jesus contrasts two groups, okay? First is the man born blind, who 
who now receives the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life, because his eyes of faith are open, he now comes to see and accept Jesus as his personal Savior from sin. All right, that's the first group. The second group are the Pharisees. They claim they can see the things of God, and yet they are blind to faith in the one the Father sent, the Lord Jesus Christ. They continue to live in unbelief and the guilt of their sins because they refuse to accept Jesus as the one the Father sent. In Matthew... He calls these folks blind guides, and he refers to them as the blind leading the blind. So, we're going to sing the next hymn, which is Amazing Grace. And I want to remind you of the phrase in that hymn. I once was blind, but now I see. We ought to praise and thank God that we have seen and come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and King. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's sing. Let's sing the, uh, the hymn for the day, the four verses of Amazing Grace, okay? for the day and we have a number of folks to pray for but we're also going to pray for God's uh, control over this coronavirus uh, not only here in the United States but around the world and uh, we praise God that it has not gotten worse than it already is we're also going to pray for the election process that we are in in the United States of America for the office of president members of Congress and local and state officials. So let's pray. If we're in heaven, these days we go through unusual times, for most of us unprecedented times. And so, dear Lord, we ask your blessings upon our world these days. We thank you, dear Lord, first of all, for the medical world and for the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all those who are working to control this virus. 
Dear Lord, be with them and enable them to do so, to come up with an antidote with medicine that will diminish the effects of this virus and able to save lives. And dear Lord, we pray for the nations of the world and for the people who are affected by this, those who are ill this day, and those families that have lost loved ones. Dear Lord, bring us through this time. Give us your joy, your hope, your peace, and the assurance of your power and your presence in our lives this day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for those who need our prayer, for Lynn and Dwayne as they go through surgery and recover from surgery. We pray for Carolyn and Mary and Beverly, for Nancy and Shirley and Margaret and Hiram. Dear Lord, bless these individuals and others as they deal with health issues. Give them the healing that, that, that they need and a sense of your presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Dear, dear, dear Lord, Lord, this day we also thank you for your provision of rain here in Southern California. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have provided us with a wonderful amount of rain to refill the snowpack and the Sierras and to refill the reservoirs and the aquifers and the groundwater. Dear Lord, thank you for this rain. May it always remind us of your blessings that shower into our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Your your prayers. Prayers. And finally, dear Father, we pray for the election process that we in the United States are going through this year. We thank you for the freedoms we have the freedom of selection, of voting, and the freedom of this democratic republic, that we are a country of law and help us to continue to live under the laws and the constitution of this nation. Today, dear Lord, we pray for this process in the selection of congressmen and women and senators and president of the United States and also state and local leaders and authorities. Dear Lord, be with this process. May your hand be in this process. And may your people in this country, your, your believers, may we approach this election with prayer and thought. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So before we conclude our worship, we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer. And uh, we have been doing this for several years. It's an echo song. I will sing the first part, and you guys uh, respond with the echo, and uh, we'll go. There are two verses in this. We kind of like this. Okay? So give us an intro. Yeah. All right, we begin. God our Father, God our Father, I in heaven, I in heaven, alone holy, alone holy, your kingdom come, your kingdom come, your will be done, your will be done, as in heaven, as in heaven. Provide for us, provide for us the things we need. The things we need. Please forgive, please forgive all our sins, all our sins as we forgive, as we forgive our brothers' sins. Lead us not. Lead us on to the test, to the test, from all ills, Lord, deliver us. Yours the kingdom, yours the kingdom, and the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory, now and always, now and always, you our Father, you our Father, be your children, 
be your children. All that we need, all that we need, comes from your hand. Comes from your hand. Break our pride. Break our pride. Lift our eyes. Lift our eyes. Raise our hands. Raise our hands. Grant us your grace. Grant us your grace. Now we go. Now we go to serve you. To serve you. Filled with love. Filled with love. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit. Bless you this day in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, we don't know, of course, what the future will hold. Our Wednesday evening dinner and service during Lent uh, has been canceled for this week. And uh, please uh, check our email. We will probably be sending out emails several times this week. And for next Sunday... Either we'll be using this format or we will have small groups meeting around in various places uh, on our campus with, uh, with uh, what do we call that, live, stream, uh, live streaming the service, okay? But anyway, uh, please be faithful to your Lord. Spend time in prayer this week, and um, okay, Jesus bless you. So let's sing the closing song, which is a VBS song. I sing. The mighty power of God. One, two, ready, go. There's no greater power than the power of our God. There's no greater power than the power of our God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowy seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that designed the sun to rule the sea. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. There's no greater power than the power of our God. There's no greater power than the power of our God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise. I spread the flowing seas abroad and build the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that designed the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command and all the stars obey. There's no greater power than the power of our God. There's no greater power than the power of our God. There's no greater power than the power of our God. There's no greater power than the power of our God. Have a good week, everybody, and Jesus bless you.